Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about six cylinders, specifically inline six cylinders and Mercedes M256 engine, which is awesome. This is actually a feel-good story about engine downsizing and usually we're all very sad about engine downsizing because the V8 is disappearing and instead we have lots of little four cylinders and that makes people sad because four cylinders are smaller and you know they don't make as cool of sounds and they're not as big and those are bad things and so people are sad about downsizing which I feel like is fair in some ways but there's actually some beauty to it and that is inline six cylinders which are kind of making a comeback so Mercedes throughout their history has had plenty of inline six cylinders but they kind of faded away in favor of the V6 uh, which they matched up with their V8 so in their big you know powerful honking engines for example we are in the GLE 450 which there I believe there is a V8 option but regardless we are driving the six cylinder version and so in this GLE 450 which is a hundred thousand dollars an incredible amount of money and honestly the car itself meh whatever the engine is very cool though and that's what I'm excited about and so in Mercedes history they take you know that V8 engine they chop off two in the cylinders they've now got a V6 that fits in the same packaging they can make those engines kind of in the similar format it's easy to do from a production standpoint it makes a lot of sense to do great do it but we are now in the world where inline four cylinders are really taking over Mercedes does these very well. So they have a inline four cylinder where, all right, here's a problem I have with this car. Anytime you say Mercedes, uh, it says, how can I help you? So now I have to say, turn off. And then I lose my train of thought purely because this thing always reacts whenever I say Mercedes. How can I help you? I hate you. Okay, the voice activation thing is terribly annoying, but Mercedes makes really good inline four-cylinder engines. In fact, in the GLA 45, they have a two-liter inline four-cylinder making 375 horsepower. If we go back just 10 years, you know, the V6 Mustang four-liter engine making 210 horsepower, and Mercedes is doing, you know, nearly double the power with literally half the displacement. Turbochargers are cool, uh, and there are some cool things about four-cylinder engines. I've owned quite a few, and I love them. Regardless, Regardless, uh, they you know downsizing is becoming more popular. So these engines, these smaller engines, are becoming more popular. And so what makes sense to do? Well, if you have a very popular inline four-cylinder segment, why not just lop on two additional cylinders for vehicles that you want to have more power, like this GLE 450? And so that's what Mercedes did. They added the inline six back into the rotation. They can make the i4 and the i6 on the same production line, so it saves in manufacturing costs. And that's the real reason why they brought it back. It's not necessarily the inherent advantages of an inline six cylinder, which there are many, uh, it's really that they could do it from a cost perspective where the V6 and the V8 were drifting apart and you know it didn't make sense to continue manufacturing these two different engines when there was a commonality between the I4 and there could be with an I6. So in comes the I6. Well, what's the challenge with an inline six cylinder? They're really long. So how do you fit an inline six cylinder in an engine bay that was previously designed for a V6 engine? Well, Mercedes did two clever things here. So the first thing they did was just simply reducing the bore size. So they went from 88 millimeters down to 83 millimeters. You do that, you know, with six different cylinders, you get those cylinders closer together, and overall that length of the engine is going to be shorter. They reduced a few inches simply by reducing the bore and increasing the stroke versus their V6 engine. The second thing they did, and this is very clever, is that they electrified the engine. And so now, in place of where you would traditionally see a torque converter, right there at the end of that crankshaft you have an integrated starter alternator what Mercedes calls ISG now why does ISG stand for integrated starter alternator and not generator I don't know maybe alternator uh, in German starts with a G or maybe their naming convention doesn't make sense just like GLE 450 doesn't make any sense because 450 doesn't stand for anything so you know I, I don't know the the naming convention and why it's ISG for letters that are ISA regardless they electrified the engine they put in this little pancake motor which is very cool and so what this little motor enables them to do because it acts as a generator as well is that they can get rid of the excess 
accessory belt at the front of the engine. So you don't have an alternator that you have to spin up, you have an electric water pump which this generator can power, and you also have an electric air compressor for your AC system. So you don't need that accessory belt up front, you eliminate that accessory belt and that gives you more space in front of the engine. And so if you actually look, this has an inline six cylinder in it and there's not a whole lot to look at because it's quite a cramped engine bay when you pop the hood, but there actually is space in front of the engine and that's what I was pretty impressed to see because it's a long inline six cylinder engine and because they've reduced the length of the block through that bore design and because they've gotten rid of that accessory belt, uh, the front of the engine has space in front of it still. Now why else is this integrated starter alternator cool? Well what's cool about it is just how much torque it has. So it's only about 22 horsepower. Okay, no big deal. But the thing makes over 160 pound feet of torque. So this tiny little pancake motor thrown on the end of a crankshaft of an engine that already makes quite a bit of power has 160 pound feet of torque. That's more than my Subaru Crosstrek has and that's the entire engine. This is just a tiny little addition to the engine. It's a 48 volt system, it's a little motor slapped on the end of it. But that means you can fill the gap where the turbocharger hasn't yet spooled up. You can use electric torque for an instant start off the line and you have additional torque when you put your foot down from that motor as well as waiting you know until that turbo gets up and then once the turbo is up to speed then you got plenty of torque from the engine itself. So it's really quite a clever integration and actually with the AMG version of this engine, so it's the same inline six cylinder, it's got that little motor in there, integrated starter alternator, and then they also include an electric air compressor. So basically an electric supercharger that's run off the 48 volt system. So that's able to provide boost in 0.3 seconds uh, to, that, to the engine. And so you have you know, a, a boost from the fact that you have electric boost from the, the motor, you have boost from this electric air compressor, and then you have boost from the turbocharger. So it's just boost, boost, boost. I mean, three times the boost. That's a ton of fun. That's awesome. It's a very clever uh, little engine, especially with that AMG version where you add on the electric supercharger. Very cool stuff. So the system includes a 0.9 kilowatt hour battery pack, and that battery pack is used to power that 48 volt system. And you can also get regen uh, when you're braking to go into that battery pack, aside from simply charging it using the engine to spin up that alternator uh, ISG system. So what else about inline six cylinders is so special? And honestly, I think they're one of the coolest engine styles out there. Uh, and part of that is the balance that they have. So assuming your manufacturing tolerances are very good, then your primary forces and your second secondary forces are all balanced out, as well as your primary and secondary moments. So it's a buttery, smooth running engine, and that is very cool alone. In addition, versus a V6, it's so much simpler. You only have one cylinder head instead of two. You only have two camshafts instead of four. You only have one exhaust manifold instead of two. You only have one turbocharger instead of two. You only have one catalytic converter right off that exhaust instead of two. So that alone, all of the simplification can save you in cost and from a maintenance standpoint I mean an inline six is so much easier to work on assuming you have the space than a v6 simply because you don't have all these duplicate parts and you don't have to worry about you know the angle of the engine and how it's packaged within everything's right up on top you've got easier access another advantage that it has is that by having the exhaust on one side and the intake on the other side you can actually bring the catalytic converter a lot closer to the engine so that helps in heating it up more quickly when you're just starting off so a Aside from the fact that Mercedes is obviously benefiting from a cost standpoint in producing this because they can do it using the four cylinder and adding on two cylinders to it, uh, there are actually very real benefits to an inline six cylinder. I think it is a very cool engine. Now that said, this car itself, the GLE 450, I think the engine's awesome. I think it's masked quite a bit about how awesome it is uh, because of this vehicle. I mean, this thing is a tank. It's quite heavy. You unfortunately don't get to feel the 362 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque, the low-end grunt that it has because of that electric motor. The thing's just too heavy to really take advantage of all that power and torque. And so, you know, obviously it needs it because it is heavy, but it doesn't particularly feel all that quick. I think the other thing this struggles with is the transmission. So there's a nine-speed automatic, and I just don't think it's that wonderful. I mean, there's 
two things that I really like in transmissions, when they shift very quickly and when they shift very smoothly. And this thing is capable of doing both of those things sometimes, but most of the time I just feel like it's doing neither. It's kind of rough, and when you ask for it, you put your foot down and you wait and you wait and you wait, and then finally it shifts for you. And even if you put it in, you know, I'm just in comfort mode, so of course it's going to take a little bit longer than if I were to be in Sport Plus, but even when I'm in Sport Plus and I put my foot down, there's a healthy delay between when I ask for power and when it shifts to the right gear and then starts providing me power. And I think that's a bit disappointing. Uh, there's kind of a disconnect there in what the driver is asking for and what this transmission is delivering. So the transmission, uh, the, the response time it has when you ask for it to shift gears and that kind of thing, even using these paddle shifters, I don't feel like it's quite there. And that's a bit of a bummer to me. I do think the ride quality is very good for what it's worth. It's a fantastic ride. Uh, the steering is basically basically completely numb and unfortunately if you turn on cruise control and you have the steering assist it's kind of constantly making these tiny little corrections and it feels awful to drive with that assisted steering on instead of you know like you would think a computer could say this is the perfect angle I'll just hold it there it is the German way but instead it's like ooh, no I'm not sure about the road what's it doing ahead and so it moves the steering wheel over the place or if you're holding it firm enough you just get that sensation in your hand as it's going left right left right and you're just trying to hold it in the center and it's saying no go this way no, go that way. So the steering is a little whack. I'm not thrilled with the transmission, but we are excited about downsizing purely because it has brought back this M256 engine. I say brought back, brought back an inline six cylinder engine to the Mercedes family. And I think that is very cool. I think inline six cylinders are very cool. So I'm excited about the engine and perhaps I will try it in another vehicle and I will fully appreciate it a bit more. So thank you all so much for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.